If you are a Marvel movie fan, then you know about Doctor Strange. You know, the rich neurosurgeon whose quest to heal his injured hands after a car crash led him to study esoteric powers. And by being able to use these powers, he became a superhero of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. One of the keys to Doctor Strange's amazing powers is the Eye of Agamotto, a mystical amulet made by the sorcerer Agamotto. It houses a glowing green gem called the Time Stone. It gives whoever possesses it the ability to alter and manipulate time. In the movie, Doctor Strange uses it to save Earth from destruction by a demon, Dormammu, by trapping him in an endless time loop. It's thanks to the Time Stone that the stories of the Marvel Universe can follow all kinds of convoluted timelines. This powerful gem is one of the six Infinity Stones around which much of the action in the movie franchise revolves. But, but this is all just far-fetched fantasy, right? Well, yes and no. As with many Hollywood sci-fi movies, what we see on screen in the Marvel franchise might seem like pure invention, but in fact draws on a surprising amount of real science. Pushed to the limits of plausibility, perhaps, but nevertheless, based in proper physics. So how is this based on real science? Well, the idea is that the time stone is in fact an example of an object that physicists have recently dreamed up and now even made for real. A real time stone? How does this work? That's coming up right now. Before we get into time stones and how they work, I'd like to give a big shout out to Magellan TV, today's sponsor. One of the best documentaries I recently watched is on the mysterious disappearance of genius Italian physicist Tori Majorana. In 1938, while traveling by ship from Palermo to Naples, he disappeared and was never found. He may have staged his own disappearance, but he made huge contributions to the understanding of dark matter and the atomic nucleus. You'll find this and thousands of other quality documentaries on Magellan TV. It's a new kind of streaming documentary service created by the filmmakers themselves. Featured subjects include science, history, travel, and technology. Magellan has a special holiday offer right now for Arvin Ash viewers. You can get a buy one, get one free gift card for an annual membership. It's a gift that you can give to someone that will cost you nothing if you sign up for a year. It's just here for the holidays, so be sure to take advantage of this by clicking the link in the description. One of the scientific advisors for the Marvel series is Spiros Miklakis, a mathematical physicist at Caltech. He has worked not only on movies like Doctor Strange, but also Ant-Man, which showed the hero shrinking and entering the quantum realm. He has explained that the time stone, as magical as it sounds, is actually based on an object that has been exciting many physicists recently, and which has now been created inside a quantum computer. It goes by a name that already sounds straight out of the Marvel Universe, a time crystal. So what is a time crystal? We all know about ordinary crystals, like this salt crystal. The atoms in them are all lined up in an orderly pattern, as if each sits on a square of a three-dimensional checkerboard, which scientists call a lattice. If you were the size of the quantum Ant-Man standing on one of these atoms, and you moved in some direction through space, you'd encounter other identical atoms at regular periodic intervals. The atomic structure of an ordinary crystal repeats again and again in space. It's symmetrical so that if you view any parts of it, you would see the same repeating pattern throughout. The reason that atoms or molecules form crystals is because this puts the structure in its lowest energy state, which all systems in the universe tend towards. In 2012, the theoretical physicist Frank Wilczek who won the 2004 Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on the structure of subatomic particles, asked whether it might be possible to make crystals that are symmetrical, not in space, but in time. What this means is that the particles it contains are constantly rearranging themselves into different configurations. But at regular intervals in time, they return to exactly the same configuration. It would be a bit like a team of American football players who are moving all around after the snap, but who, every few plays, find themselves back in the same formation. Wilczek said that behavior like this would be like the spontaneous emergence of a clock within the system of particles, ticking at a rate it sets for itself. That's why making time crystals isn't just an intellectual exercise for physicists. It could be useful too. They would be natural timekeepers beating to a pulse of their own choosing 
Some researchers think that time crystals might help us make better atomic clocks. Currently, the most accurate timekeepers use, for example, in GPS navigation satellites. Others have suggested that time crystals made from quantum particles could be components for building quantum computers, which can be much more powerful than today's classical machines. But these applications are speculative right now. The regular periodic behavior that Wilczek described looks a lot like a pendulum in a clock, an old grandfather clock. The pendulum swings back and forth, and at the end of each to and fro swing, the bob, or all the atoms it contains, returns to the same position. But no ordinary pendulum can swing forever, no matter how well it's made. Friction at the pivot point will make it slowly lose energy until it stops swinging. Wilczek wondered if there was some way of making a collection of quantum particles that, like a pendulum, will keep moving, but will periodically return to the same positions, and whether they could do this without pumping energy into the system to keep the motion going. His idea got other physicists thinking. Wilczek admitted that a time crystal sounded dangerously like a perpetual motion machine, which is forbidden by the laws of thermodynamics. But he argued that it isn't really because it neither consumes nor produces energy. However, three years later, other physicists proved that actually a quantum time crystal can't avoid the same problem as a pendulum. It will gradually dissipate the energy it starts with so that oscillations will slowly die away. This did not put an end to the story, though, because just as you can keep a pendulum swinging as long as you give it a little push every so often, so too can a time crystal be kept oscillating by feeding energy into it with some kind of driving force. This should not be a big deal because we see this happening all the time, for example, in children's playgrounds as someone can keep a swing going by pushing it. But there happens to be a big difference. When you push a child on a swing, the oscillations happen at the same frequency as the pushing. But physicists realize that for the kind of quantum system that Wilczek had studied, something odd happens when you produce oscillations by such a periodic driving force. The period of the oscillations, that is the length of time it takes for the particles to return to their original configuration is not the same as the period of the pushing. It can be twice as long or three times as long or any whole number multiple. It's as if the particles are saying, thanks for the push, but we're gonna vibrate at the frequency we choose, not the one you choose. So it turns out that this kind of behavior is genuine time crystal behavior because the periodicity arises from the interactions of the particles within the crystal and not from the pushing. All the pushing does is it stops the time crystal from running out of energy. And because the periodicity is some whole number or discrete multiple of the driving period, they are called discrete time crystals. This concept of the periodicity of time crystals emerging from within the crystal itself rather than from any external source was the inspiration for the idea of time manipulation in the Doctor Strange Marvel movies. Now, I want you to understand that no legitimate scientist really thinks we can manipulate time using time crystals. At least, nothing like that yet. But there's some logic to the Marvel madness, and it goes like this. The curious thing about time crystals is that they dance to the beat of their own drum. They take in energy from their surroundings, but their periodic ticking rate is their own. So the idea of the science advisors for the movie was that the time stone is a quantum time crystal that somehow seals off a part of space and time and imposes its own internal clock on the flow of time there. So how does this actually affect real events inside that zone? Here the advisors used another highly speculative idea from the forefront of physics called the holographic universe. It roughly says that the total amount of information inside a volume of space can be encoded on the boundary of that volume. Relating this to our universe, it means that all the information contained in our universe, including time, could be encoded on its boundary infinitely far away. You can imagine this like a 3D hologram created on a 2D surface. Now you might ask, is that what the real world is like? A kind of quantum projection on the boundary of the universe? The problem is no one knows for sure because it's mathematically identical. 
But this idea of the Marvel scientist is not as crazy as it might sound. It has its roots in real science. And that's the idea the Marvel advisors ran with. What it would mean is that all of reality, everything that happens is basically a kind of quantum computation taking place in that quantum boundary realm. In this picture, you could say that everything, including us, is made of quantum code. So the time stone, being a quantum time crystal, can take a patch of that quantum code, a bit of reality, whether past, present, or future, and rewire it to transform the way time moves within it. The time stone, taking in energy from its surroundings, imposes its own pulse on the way time flows inside the bit of the universe that it controls. Spiros McLachis explains it this way. The Eye of Argamado is a time crystal that can generate its own quantum dynamics despite being driven by the external environment at whatever frequency. Is this confusing and far-fetched? Sure, but it's not all total fantasy because time crystals are real and we've made them by controlling quantum matter. How do we do this? One of the ways to make a quantum time crystal is to take a row of atoms that act a little like magnets. They have a spin, which can point in one direction or the other, up or down. In the time crystal state, the spins would keep flipping back and forth along the row, like a stadium wave. They would do this with some kind of period, making the structure a time crystal. You would need to keep adding energy in order to sustain this wave, and then also figure out a way to dissipate this energy so that the system does not become too hot and fall apart. In 2017, two teams reported that they had made discrete quantum time crystals, experimentally, in chains of spins. For example, by suspending a row of charged atoms in an electromagnetic trap. Still though, they couldn't entirely prevent these systems from absorbing too much energy. It wasn't until 2021 that two teams of scientists independently made a discrete quantum time crystal that could, in theory, keep oscillating forever. They made them actually inside quantum computers. Quantum computers do their calculations using quantum bits or qubits, which are like particles with spin that can point up or down. And these up or down states encode the ones and zeros of binary information. These bits are manipulated using the rules of quantum mechanics, which allows quantum computers to do things that aren't possible in normal classical computers. In these experiments, the oscillations died away after only about 100 cycles, but that's because the quantum bits in any of today's quantum computers become scrambled in just a second or less as they interact with the stuff around them. This is a process called quantum decoherence. But it wasn't due to any failure of the time crystal itself. I made a video on decoherence if you want to learn more about that process. Now the question can be raised, was this a simulation of a time crystal conducted on a quantum computer? Or did they create a real time crystal from the computer's quantum bits? The funny thing is, no one knows for sure, but there may not be any difference. It was a time crystal made from the actual quantum objects that make up the computer's quantum bits. And it works pulsing away for as long as the computer can keep its bits in their collective quantum state. So we can now say that quantum time crystals do indeed really exist in the world. But so far, the idea of these time crystals being able to create some kind of isolated holographic quantum realm where time can exist differently and out of phase with the real world is still only a Hollywood fantasy. But you have to give the movie makers some credit because it is at least connected to the ideas in real science, which you don't see in every movie. And if you have a question or comment for me or other viewers, please leave it in the comment section because I try to look at all of them. I'll see you in the next video, my friend.